Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video. In fact, this is the first video I've done this year and it's now September. So I do apologize to my entire audience for not producing any new content. I've just had lots of things going on in my private life, which has actually prevented me from putting any time to, to one side to actually do these videos. Now, I have over 4,000 subscribers. I really cannot thank you enough. Um, it just really proves to me that uh, you guys are interested in the content that I produce and uh, you know your feedback and your comments and uh, everything that you say to me just just keeps on producing better videos so thank you very much so without further ado we are going to be looking at the Raspberry Pi 3 and we're going to be looking at the Plex media server and how it handles now for those of you who follow my channel will know that I've done a uh, Plex Media Server on the Pi 2 and for all intents and purposes it worked okay. Um, the only particular downfall of that is that subtitles did not render at all due to the Pi not having enough power. So this is something that I'm going to be looking at with the Pi 3 and hope that the increased um, performance should be able to transcode that out to iPads and Androids and that's something that we're going to be looking at and I will not be satisfied until I see those subtitles. So without further ado let's see how it's done. So I'm starting out with a fresh image of Jesse just so that we um, are all sort of working from the same page really. So one of the beauties of the Pi 3 is it's got built-in wireless so you can actually connect that straight to it but if you're going to be using um, Plex Media Server on a more permanent basis then I would suggest, I uh, highly recommend actually use a wired cable. Uh, it all depends upon how fast your router is. Now I'm expecting Plex Media Server to run a bit better um, bearing in mind the Pi 3 has got a 1.2 gig processor um, running on an ARM V8 whereas the Pi 2 uh, was only 900 uh, and that was based on ARM v7 so I am expecting much better results so once we've got the uh, Pi connected to the internet what we need to do is go back to the command line now I don't want it booting into uh, the GUI every time so I'm going to go down to the configuration here uh, and just change this setting here, it says boot to desktop so we just put a tick in that box there to C uh, CLI, so command line interface so hit OK on that uh, and then reboot again and it should now automatically log us in as well, which it has so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of these commands into the description so that you can just uh, copy and paste them straight in um, uh, just to sort of make it a bit quicker really. You can do that through a Telnet session or a PuTTY session um, but what uh, I'm going to do is I'm just going to type them out uh, for those that don't have those facilities so for those people that are sitting in front of a Pi without actually actually on the Pi itself rather than remotely connected. So we'll do a sudo apt get and we'll do the update first of all uh, and we'll uh, splice a couple of these commands together so we'll also do a sudo apt get uh, install apt hyphen transport hyphen https bin utils minus y space hyphen hyphen force hyphen yes no space on that and then let that run through Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the key so this allows us to actually install the software so we use wget minus o not zero o space hyphen space https dev today dot de forward slash pms forward slash dev to day hyphen pms dot gpg dot key and we're going to pipe that to sudo apt key oh sorry hyphen key space add 
space hyphen nice and quick so uh, next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to add the repositories for the software so um, all we're going to do is say basically add this line so echo quotes uh, deb and then put in the address again so https oops https forward slash forward slash dev today dot de forward slash pms forward slash space jesse space main close your quote and then pipe that to sudo t and then forward slash etc apt sources dot list dot d slash pms dot list and that effectively adds that line in then next we uh, just get the packages list so sudo apt get update So now that's done, now we're actually going to do the installation itself. And it really was that simple. So we just do a sudo apt hyphen get install plex media server space minus y. And it downloads the package. So there we go, start in Plex Media Server. And then finally we just do another reboot, so sudo reboot. Cat's desperate for me to get on with this video. So as we can see from that list there, it actually states that Plex Media Service has actually started so that's good now for future reference I'm not going to run it now because it takes about 20 minutes to run but if you want to do an upgrade on uh, Plex Media Server what you would do is you'd say sudo apt get update and then also uh, mix that in with sudo apt get upgrade minus uh, y if you run that it will then upgrade the package so I'm going to make Plex run as a Pi user and it sort of helps around with the permissions a bit. So what we'll do is we'll do a sudo nano and we're going to edit the file default forward slash Plex media server. We need to find the line Plex media server user. So as we can see here, it says that the user is Plex. So we want to change that to Pi. And then just do a, a, a Control uh, O and a Control X. And that saves that. Uh, next we need to do is just change a couple of permissions. So we do sudo ch own, so that's to change the owner, minus capital R and we'll set pi uh, and pi uh, set minus var lib plex media server done and then what we'll do is we'll we'll restart the plex service so we'll just do sudo service plex media server and then do restart And that's it. So if we now start up our GUI, they go into menu, internet, and run the web browser. So what we've done there is we've basically said go locally use port 3200, uh, 3400 which is the standard plex port forward slash web and that will then start up the 
Plex Media uh, interface. So I'm going to sign as myself. So once you're signed in, you get a little friendly message. So they got it. Uh, not for this time because we're on the demo. What we want to be doing is we want to be give it give it a name. So we'll call this uh, Pi Three. And you can select that option if you want to be able to access the media. Um, outside and that just ensures that your uh, the necessary ports are open. So hit next. Hit next. And then done. And there we have it. It is running. So this is where we now start adding our material. So now that we've got the Plex Media server up and running, we need to add some data to it but when you go to add library and you go through the usual process of you know TV shows next add a folder browse you can't see the drive that you plugged in now I plugged in a USB drive here um, and it's not showing in the menus so what we need to do is we actually need to mount that drive so let's go through that process so just cancel that um, close that down and then we'll go back to the uh, command line. So I plugged it in. Now, more than likely, the device is going to be uh, SDA one, but obviously, what what you've got there might not necessarily be the same thing. So the the, what, the commands that we run to to find that out is we run sudo bulk id. And we can see that the last device there, dev slash SDA1, is showing us that that is actually plugged in and working. So it proves that the Pi can see the pen and the pen is working. So if you're having issues with your pen, run that command and just see what actually comes up. Uh, we can also run sudo fdisk minus L. Oops, minus L. Uh, and then it'll also show us the last. Uh, device there is SDA1 is 7.3 so 8 gig pen which is correct and the filing system so that's another good way of sort of um, proving that that works so next we're going to mount the drive so we're going to do a sudo mkd so make directory mount and then we'll call it plex library for example um, then we do sudo nano fs tab. So what you want to type in here is you want to basically follow the format that's above. So we do forward slash dev sda1, which was our device. Um, the spacing doesn't really matter too much. You put uh, forward slash mount plex library. Um, it's an NTFS pen, so we're going to put NTFS as the filing system, and then defaults, and then zero, and then zero. Control O to write, and then Control X to save. Now, with a bit of luck, when we go back into the GUI, we should be able to browse that pen. So we go to add library and I've got a couple of um, TV shows as a sample on a pen. So we go to the next and hopefully with a bit of look when we browse. Yay, there it is. So that's our mount and that's pointing at the pen. So if we go in there, lo and behold is our folder. So we'll say add and then add library. And there we go. Now 
Now this is the one I'll be testing because it's got subtitles and there we go it's actually picking that up as well so that's good so what we'll t be testing next is whether these actually render out to our devices now comes the actual testing so I tried to do it through the wireless and it was it was working but it was just taking a very very long time to start so I've actually plugged it into a network cable and as you can see here it's, it's now connected to the Pi so we'll just bring up our sample media so here we've got subtitles set to none so we'll see how quick that starts up jogging you get to the layout long geography so we're gonna try this uh, slide oops I'm slide to a random point So that seems to be working alright. So now what we're going to do is we stop that. And for the ultimate test, this is what you guys have been waiting for. Subtitles. Subtitles is English. So obviously these are the subtitles that I've got on my particular file, but obviously you'll see whatever you've got and so we got it there English English so let's go and restore and there we have it guys So we'll just skip it with some, see how quick it takes to start up with the rendering. And the font's very clear as well, actually. So there we go guys, Raspberry Pi 3, transcoding to an iPad, showing subtitles.